I've got a good bat costume here to show you. Didn't matter what race you were, what color you were, what religion you were, what language you spoke, you watched Mr. Dress Up. Ernie Coombs, Mr. Dress Up, I mean, he was just so kind and gentle. Ernie never forgot a child within him, and that informs everything <laughs> that he does with children. Everybody's best friend growing right? up, right? I mean, it just sparks something within just to even see the tickle trunk. Well, because it was a kinder, gentler, softer time, I think. I mean, yeah. we were kids, so you didn't have all the stressors. You and just you had to got be to turn on the it. TV in black and white. But you had to be in front of it at the yeah. time it came on. Like, it was special. It's like, wait, wait, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah. It's Mr. Dress Up time, you know? We could use a little Mr. Dress Up okay. in 2023, I'll tell you that. And you know what? We're going to get it because there was a new documentary on Amazon Prime and it is called Mr. Dress Up, The Magic of Make Believe. Mm. This is coming out on October the 10th. Everybody has got to check this out so you can sort of feel really a wash in the warm yeah. feelings from your childhood. And I thought to myself, can you imagine if Mr. Dress Up was actually your father? Having been Mr. Dress Up for 20 years has probably made me a better person. You assume that he comes home and kicks off his Mr. Dress Up shoes and becomes a different person when he's at home. <laughs> that just simply didn't happen. Right. How fun would that be? What was it like, Linda? Well, let's dig in because we have a very special guest on the show right now. We have Ernie Coombs' daughter, Kathy LaForte, is joining us. Thank you so much for doing this. Hey, good to be with you today. Can we talk about the fact that Mr. Dress Up was your dad? Yeah. What was that like? And, <laughs> and how did you feel sharing your dad with all the other kids in the world? That's the million dollar question, right? Uh, it was um, just the same as anybody else's dad, really. When we were kids growing up, um, people used to ask me that question quite often. And I would say, well, what does your dad do? Because I really didn't know anything different. Um, and it was great to share him with everybody. I mean we were excited by it we'd go to see his stage shows and we'd see the excitement of the kids um and their parents as they were coming in to see him so it was uh it was an honor to share with canadian so linda and i are talking about how it is for us to look at some of the footage that are part of the documentary again that's on amazon prime as of october 10th i can't wait to watch it yeah. what was it like for you to to dig back into those nostalgic moments those family moments and those public moments because just for us, it's it's welling us up with emotion. I can't imagine what that's like for you. Um, it was exciting. I've, I've had two opportunities to watch on the big screen. Uh, the first one was at TIFF uh, when we premiered the film and uh, that was overwhelming. It was so exciting. Uh, it was like almost a family reunion. There were so many people there who had worked with dad over the years that I got an opportunity to see again. You know, some of them I hadn't seen since I was a child, you know. Uh, so it was it was really, really exciting. Is there anything that we would be surprised to know about your dad? Hmm, hmm surprised? I'm not sure. He liked to tinker in the garage a lot. That was his thing when he wasn't uh, touring or, um, you know, taping the show. Uh, aside from, you know, time spent in Maine at our family cottage, he was always tinkering in the garage. He had a, an old 1932 Auburn, which was his pride and joy. And uh, he just loved to spend time working on that. The magic, just we're just looking at some of these visuals, some of these pictures that take us back. I was saying earlier to Linda, Finnegan was my first dog, you know? <laughs> Casey was my first best friend. It, it felt like, as a latchkey kid, for so many kids who had, you know, in our instance, a, a single parent who worked, we felt like we were um, well taken care of by a close friend, uh, you know, because of your dad. What was the, the impetus for Mr. Dress Up? Where did he come from originally? He started out uh, in the States. It, it was really quite a serendipitous journey, him getting to Canada to do the show. He started working at WQED in Pittsburgh with Fred Rogers uh, on another children's show called, oh, I'm gonna forget, Dimple Depot. Um, <laughs> and then from there, they came to Canada together. Uh, Dad first as a puppeteer to join Fred Rogers doing the Mr. Rogers show. 
yeah. here at CBC in Canada. And then um, Fred went back to Pittsburgh and dad stayed and became kind of the center of uh, a show called Mr. Dress Up along with um, Casey and Finnegan. You said that you got the opportunity to go to the set, you know, see what's in that tickle trunk and, and the puppets. I mean, it's interesting. I was saying to Jody earlier that these days kids have all this, you know, artificial intelligence and all these crazy created, you know, animated graphics and what have you. Back then, I mean, Casey's mouth didn't even move, no. right? And Finnegan at least had the hand. <laughs> um, so tell me what that was like for you as a kid. I mean, how sacred were those puppets? <laughs> well, those puppets have always lived with Judith. So um, oh. I did get to see them if I was visiting the studio, uh, you know, on the occasion that dad was taping. There were sometimes we went and joined him downtown. Um, but for the most part, they stayed with uh, with Judith. Um, I remember as a child, you know, peeking in behind the set and looking in the treehouse and that kind of thing. Um, and it was all really magical, as I remember. We, we heard uh, one of the clips from the documentary again, October 10th, Amazon Prime is where you get to be able to uh, revisit all this. I want to make sure people are writing yes. that down. But not knowing whether Casey was a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. like they were so ahead of its time, Kathy. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, there were a lot of concepts that were ahead of their time uh, early on, along with, you know, this non-binary character that everybody was able to relate to. You know, you said that you uh, were spending time with a trusted friend, you know, as as a latchkey kid. And I think that was um, the case for a lot of kids. You know, they related um, to sitting down and dad as um, a performer treated the camera as that individual child. So everybody had that kind of personal experience and connection. We all feel like we had a little well, part of him in our right? souls, right? Yeah. Oh, I love it. And for the 40 years or so that he was a performer, when he did retire, was that hard for him to adjust? He kept quite busy. Um, you know, he did do some traveling. He spent time with my kids were young at the time. So, you know, there were lots of opportunities to spend time with grandkids uh, and to travel. But he did a number of, um, you know, opportunities as Mr. Dress Up. He did tours to college pubs, which was uh, called Tales from the Tickle Trunk, um, <laughs> where, you know, you, he would have these college kids coming up and asking for hugs. And it was before the days of selfies, of course, but yeah, of course. everybody wanted a picture with him. Yeah, yeah. Everybody wanted to share, you know, their personal experience of what it was like to have met him when they were when they were small children. So he was he was really, really busy in those days. I, I don't ever recall him um, being bored. I'm sure he had the opportunity to relax um, a bit, <laughs> Finally, but he yeah. really did enjoy his retirement. What was that whole journey like for your mom? She was uh, behind the scenes to some degree, but a great influence on dad. Um, my mom was an early childhood education professional. Uh, she had a daycare of uh, a reasonably large daycare with over 100 spaces. Uh, and she really kind of had the theoretical background that she could share with dad in terms of, um, you know, what, uh, how little preschoolers thought, what was important to them, um, you know, how to convey different concepts and, uh, you know, ideas to them. So I think, um, you know, for mom, she was behind dad 100%. Uh, and, you know, we may not completely even have understood at that point what an influence she was on everything that he did. Now, you said you got to watch the documentary twice very quickly. I believe you said you cried. At what point? Oh, boy. Well, as people will see when they watch the documentary, it's, it's quite a personal story. It's kind of the story of dad's journey to becoming Mr. Dress Up and his experience, but it's also a personal glimpse into, um, you know, who he was as a man, uh, as a husband, as a father and a family man. Um, and, you know, we tragically lost my mom in 1992. Yeah. So um, seeing the documentary was an opportunity to kind of spend time with them again, oh. yeah. um, which, which was really an emotional experience. Oh, Kathy. No doubt. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. And we yeah. can't wait 
to watch the documentary on Amazon Prime on the 10th. I am thanks so for excited, sharing excited for your dad with us. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. <laughs> my, my pleasure. All right, definitely tuning that in. I'm, I'm emotional just talking to her. We have one degree of Mr. Dress Up right here. Yeah, and it's exciting. And now we're going to shift the vibe because make sure you stir, stay tuned for our What the Hell segment. Yeah. Um, why get a job when you can just take what you want for free? Oh, man. What the hell is wrong with people? Coming up next.